Welcome back! I'm Luca and this is Project Verde. Today I want to show you something um, unusual. So we have our normal setup. So we have our black fence of the dagger with the Verbero sensor module Mark 1 connected to it, taped to it, right? And we have our um, Verbero gym box, right? which is this one. It's a standard Raspberry Pi 3 with a power bank attached right now, so we'll be able to use it uh, completely wirelessly. Uh, and um, let's see. So uh, now the sensor is turned off, so I also want to show you how quick it is to set up. So I'm just turning it on, you will see an LED <coughs> will uh, blink uh, yellow, right? So it should be ready right now. And Let's start delivering some, uh, some cuts, right? So let's start with a two edge cut. Another one. Another one. Let's try a false edge cut. Some thrust. A slice of thrust. Another one. And maybe some uh, flats. So let me jump uh, right in and try to explain you guys uh, what's happening there. So we, are, we have already seen that uh, Verber is able to analyze uh, impacts in real time, right? Um, so the problem that we are facing now is that um, those impacts have to be uh, somehow, uh, the information about those impacts has to be somehow conveyed to the, to the user, right? So uh, we are going to create some kind of user interface in order to show, uh, to describe the impacts also uh, visually, right? But if you think about it, you're kind of adding a level of complexity on top of everything, because now you have described the impact, but you have to use sight in order to see, you know, the monitor, the user interface, and uh, read, and maybe, uh, you know, you can use uh, icons and uh, glyphs to to um, to better uh, explain the, 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 the impact, right? But um, you're basically triggering the uh, language uh, and so what we could do instead is try experimenting with uh, sounds. So if you think about it, um, when you uh, hear a glass shattering, right, uh, you can quite well understand if it was a simple glass, if it was a big mirror, if it was a window, right? And uh, uh, it all comes down to uh, train your ear, your earring, to recognize those kind of patterns, right? If you hear a car passing by, uh, you can understand if it's a big car, if it's a truck, uh, you know, uh, the, because your uh, earring is already trained to uh, perform those tasks, right? So the goal here is to try and link a specific uh, sound wave, a specific sound form to uh, an impact in order to describe it, uh, in order for your earring to understand uh, at a glance uh, if what you delivered was a, a thrust, a, a cut, or a, a flat, right? And also in what measure these components uh, would uh, sum up to describe the full, uh, the full impact. Right, and uh, uh, in order to do this, uh, we use some uh, some technique. Uh, so let's go back to the video and try to understand uh, how that's happening. So uh, let's see how we can generate a sound for a specific uh, impact, uh, basing on some uh, considerations. Right. So the first consideration is that um, the um, the data from the uh, impact uh, will deviate from a standard uh, form, from standard frequencies, uh, quite um, suddenly, right? Uh, as you can see in uh, uh, as you can see in uh, in this graph, right? So this is an example of a thrust with uh, a lot of flat components. So on the red you have the thrust vector. So the forces that are uh, acting on, on in this uh, direction, right? 
on the yellow you have the edge vector, so the forces that are acting on this vector, and on uh, the green you have the flat vector, so the forces that are, that are acting on this vector, right? What you see here on the graph uh, is not actually the, uh, the trace of the accelerometer, but it's data which, is, uh, which has been already elaborated by, by the system, right? And um, you can see uh, you can see here that um, I've added a couple of lines here. So let's say that we don't consider or we consider uh, less the data which is inside these thresholds, right? Because this is the normal uh, um, uh, pattern of the sword of the dagger when we are just moving it. When we have an impact, we have some peaks. Right. And we can associate that specific frequency to each peak. And let's say the human ear uh, is quite sensible to uh, high pitch frequencies and less sensible to low pitch uh, frequencies. Um, and there are some sweet spots of frequencies that, that can really get the attention of our uh, earring, of our brain. Right. So to, to, to demonstrate that, uh, let's uh, let's make an example, right? So, um, there is a technology which is called uh, DTMF, which basically are the tones that you hear on the phone when you when you press the, 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 the keys, right? So, uh, how does that work, right? So I'm talking I'm talking of, 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 of this one, right? So, uh, when you press the keypad on your on your phone, you hear your noises basing on the sounds. Uh, on, the, on the numbers, right? Your specific sounds, right? And that works basically combining uh, two frequencies on a matrix, right? So uh, these frequencies are combined in a, uh, two, um, two uh, sine waves, basically, which get uh, outputted by the, uh, the, the, the uh, loudspeaker or the, uh, the phone, right? And uh, you can actually understand if uh, it is a low number or a high number even if you don't know what the number is right so a one would be a pretty low frequency a nine would be a pretty high right and in between you can actually grasp if you are uh, uh, dealing with a small number or a high number right so in the same way uh, this technology is associating a specific frequency to each to each specific row and each specific line what we can do is that we can associate a frequency to each specific uh, curve, right? So in this case, we will have an high pitch, um, a high pitch sound for thrust vectors. We will have a medium sound, which is kind of sweet spot, kind of the sweet spot of the earring for the um, edge vectors, and we will have a low frequency um, sound for the flat vectors, and we can combine them together, right? So let, let's start with just the just the thrust uh, enabled, right? So you can see uh, what I'm talking about. So if I deliver some thrusts now, you hear the loud, the, the high pitch, right? For the specific uh, for the thrusts, right? And nothing else. So you know that when you hear an high pitch, then that's a thrust component, right? Same thing we could do with the edge vectors, right? So right now only uh, edge vectors will produce a sound, right? And this is the medium right spot for the human. Right? You see, if I deliver a proper thrust, I kind of set, I, I hear a lower amount of edge component, right? When if I deliver a proper, uh, a proper cut, you see a lot of, you see a lot of noise on that specific threshold, right? And we can also understand if the pitch is going up, this will be a false edge. If the pitch is going down, this will be a true edge cut, right? So true edge cut. See, it goes up. And a false edge cut. See, it goes down, right? 
on that specific frequencies. And same thing we can do with just the flat vectors, right? Almost nothing, right? But if I deliver a uh, false, uh, um, sorry, a flat uh, bit, you see, we have a lot more data on that specific patient, right? So if I can activate uh, all of them together, able to understand what kind of load of delivery just by hearing the sound of it. Right? So through edge cuts. And uh, <clears throat> finally, uh, let me finish this video with an anticip anticipation for, for the next one. So, one of the things that will uh, uh, really help uh, to improve the system is being able to stream data from the sensor to uh, the gym box. So right now, the sensor is sending data only when it detects uh, an impact, and then the gym box is uh, analyzing the impact and giving us uh, a, a result, right? Uh, what we can uh, do right now with the system is activating the streaming and as you will see data is going to be streamed directly uh, from the sensors to the gym box right as I'm moving you can see right uh, so it's not perfect as you can see there is some uh, interruption in the streaming uh, but I'm going to fix that right now right so as you can see this can also link to the impact detection to the impact detection right so let's go to the zoom yep and as you can see, right, with the impact, I have the, the waveforms directly in streaming. Right. And this can be uh, really helpful, so I can stop the streaming uh, just by pressing the button right now. Right. And uh, this is really helpful because I'm able then to uh, navigate throughout the system. Okay, I can zoom if I want, right? Uh, I can uh, navigate back and forth and uh, zoom on specific areas. And I will be able to tag these areas in order to improve the, uh, the detection models uh, of, uh, uh, of the entire system. And this will also be uh, able when I start working on multiple sensors in the same uh, in the same time. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, see you next time with a new one. Bye.